so back to my original thought before this thing was about to uh, give me some nasty tongue bite. Uh, let's see, I started, I picked up my first pipe, I think I was, you know, 15 or 16. It's, it's been a while. I'm 22 now, I can't quite remember that far back. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> uh, let's see. Picked it up at the antique fair where I get most of my pipes, which is uh, in uh, Cambridge, Minnesota. Every like first weekend of August, they have this huge antique fair on the fairgrounds, and uh, and you know I've 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 had really good luck finding used pipes there. So uh, first or second time out there, I find a pipe. You know, it kind of intrigues me, uh, you know, you know, uh, back when I wasn't a smoker, it was always kind of a, an interesting thought, you know, it's, it kind of draws attention. So I figured I'd get one. If nothing else, as a, uh antiquity and uh <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh at this we uh we go on this field trip one day to this indian uh native american uh museum or something of that nature and uh they have a herbal smoking blend <laughs> all sorts of herbs and uh you know it i I don't even remember what it was like, but it was basically like a burning pile of leaves. And then, you know, I, I picked it up, so I gotta try it. Throw it on my pipe, you know, smoke it. Just stinks, you know, just, just like a brush fire. It's just gross. And, uh, so, uh, you know, being a, such a big fan of Lord of the Rings and, you know, growing up watching all those and other things, I've picked up this church warden pipe online and uh, that was my second pipe which happened to be a new one and uh, the guy I bought it from sent with a, a patch of lovely lovely uh, mint cigarette tobacco <laughs> I didn't know so I give that a try man is it better than that other shit even though it was pretty terrible for my standards today, it was, you know, it wasn't bad. And I have an older brother who's about two years older than me. So he turns, uh, he turns 18 and I convince him to run into a tobacco shop and pick up, you know, a big pound bag of mint tobacco. You know, that's kind of what I had. I can't, I mean, I'm not allowed in those shops at this time, so what do I know? <laughs> so I start out smoking, you know, that stuff. It takes me a good couple of years, a year and a half to uh, to actually get through it. And I, I find this guy online to buy some cigars from. And of course, you know, not 18, very legal. Get a batch of cigars. Not really the biggest cigar fan compared to pipes. Uh, I don't really like that it loses its its flavor much quicker as it gets closer to the to the end, and it's all basically just moisture and spit. And uh, I didn't want to waste the tobacco of the you know nub ends of the cigars, <laughs> so I'd cut them up. Stick them in my pipe, smoke that. It smelled terrible, tasted terrible, but it was something to smoke. And then, of course, I turned 18. And uh, somewhere along the lines, I've gone to this antique fair again and gotten a few more pipes. I'm, I'm up to like 15. I don't, I don't remember how many I had, but I had a good, good starting. Uh, collection going 
And now I get introduced to this whole new world of opportunity to, to buy actual tobacco. Now, you know, I try the standard stuff that, that's in every tobacco shop around the, the states of, you know, Prince Albert, Captain Black, all these, you know, standard smoke shop blends that uh, aren't that great. <laughs> Pretty much just pouch, pouch tobacco and... I mean, Prince Albert wasn't wasn't bad. I, I mean, it's not a bad bad blend for starting out. I just uh, I'm, I haven't actually tried it in a long time, so I'd I'd give it another try. Try all these aromatics, you know, cherries, all this cig cigarillos, you know. I never never once smoked a cigar cigarette. Still haven't. I mean, something about the white paper, you know, the bleach. It's all those chemicals. I'm I'm not about that. But then I uh, keep watching some some online stuff and make an order with pipes and cigars. Which, looking back, I probably could have just said I was 18 and ordered stuff there anyway. And, uh... What did I pick up? I think I got Frogmorton. All the blends from Frogmorton. I, I was watching a lot of reviews on it. and A lot of positive reviews, rightfully so. And, uh... As soon as I lit up uh, Frogmorton on the Bayou, I, I knew I could never go back. I mean, I, I was in for the long run at that point. <laughs> so it's really until you find a really good blend that you actually get an appreciation for it. You know, everything actually is the way it's supposed to be. So I smoke all those blends. Then I get all of the, the Peterson tins, try all those. Just wasn't really a fan, you know, but I, I still had them, so I smoked all those. And this is, I think I'm in college at this point. I went to college for two years. And, uh... I mean, there were one or two that I liked. I think, uh... Sweet Killarney was pretty good, and, uh... Irish Flake. Irish Flake is really good. I like that stuff, but... The other ones were pretty raisiny. I don't, not my, not my thing. Then I got a. Uh, what did I get after that? Some Hearth and Home blends. And then uh, smoked all those. Got a. Uh, what did I get? Brigadier Black, which I until recently was smoking. I just finished all that up, or am close to finishing it up. That was like five or six eight ounce tins, so it was a lot of tobacco. And uh, somewhere in there, I, uh, I actually grew my own. I had about 55 tobacco plants and grew my own tobacco. Harvested it, all that. And it's all still sitting in my in my dad's shed. Because I, uh, I think I harvested it too late, so it didn't have time to cure properly. And I don't think it's smokable, but I'll probably check on it next spring or something and see how it is. It's probably terrible. Of course, I'm not going to smoke it. I'm just going <laughs> to inspect it. You never want to smoke tobacco that you don't know because there's some pretty deadly chemicals if it's not cured properly. But that was a lot of work. I, I definitely learned a lot from that. Now I've got this kind of revitalized... Uh, interest in the uh, in the subject I've joined a lot of groups on Facebook and keep seeing it and keep finding new blends and I found this tobacco shop that's an actual tobacco shop not too far down the road and it's uh, I've gotten well what I'm smoking right now there it's a good group of guys uh, But, um, yeah, just yesterday I, I have this buddy that, uh, he found about seven pipes in a stand and some other stuff. And, you know, I, it's, I think it's going to be a good, a good, uh, good source of additions to my collection. 
I think he's he's really he's really big. Like that's his full time job now is picking and antiquing and selling and all that. You know. And I really like uh, I really like used pipes, estate pipes, whatever you want to call them. Um, I just like I don't know, just bringing them back to life. There's there's a lot of a, a story and of of each pipe you know that i i don't know <laughs> nobody knows but you can definitely tell i do however really really want to pick up a poker any day now i don't have a single poker i want a really really uh large bold poker if not make my own i'd love to try and make my own Anyway, I'll probably uh, think of uh, some more advice and things of that nature later down the road, but I just wanted to get a little background on what I've learned, how I started out, and where I'm at. But I think I'm going to finish this up. Have a good night.